Chapter 4.7 Abstract Power Hierarchies What good is a title if you have to earn it? Sir Walter Elliot Persuasion Reference 101 Chapter 4.7.1 Nothing but stories told by storytellers we have established that sapiens are unique in comparison to other species in nature because of how much they rely on abstract sources of power to form their dominance hierarchies, rather than physical power to form their dominance hierarchies. Sapiens have been behaving this way since at least the dawn of the Neolithic era. If the previously mentioned anthropological theories are true, then using abstract power to form dominance hierarchies became popular because they gave people a way to avoid physical confrontation while simultaneously helping them to emotionally reconcile the cognitive dissonance they were feeling about their domestication of animals and mass destruction of surrounding flora and fauna. It is clear from the fossil record that humans started believing in abstract power and using it to form their dominance hierarchies thousands of years before the invention of written language. Thus, thousands of years before sapiens were even capable of formally encoding the logic of their abstract power hierarchies using rules of law. Written language is what gave sapiens the means to begin formally codifying the logic of their abstract beliefs using syntactically and semantically complex logic. Today, we call this formally encoded logic rules of law. As previously mentioned, one of the major benefits of storytelling is that it allows people to transcend their physical constraints and cooperate on much larger scales. Written language was a storytelling game changer when it comes to getting people to adopt common belief systems about abstract power because written languages transcend the need for synchronous communication of stories. Write something down, and that story can be shared asynchronously with unlimited people without the author needing to be present or even alive. People with abstract power took advantage of written language to convince more people to believe in their abstract power. This means written language was yet another power projection tactic. To this day, written language still remains one of the most potent power projection tactics in human society, hence why the pen is often considered to be mightier than the sword. Not surprisingly, the ability to read and write increased the likelihood of having abstract power and control authority over people's valuable resources. Literacy, especially the ability to read and write laws, or in modern times, the ability to read and write software translates directly to abstract power. Practically, as soon as people learned how to write, they started encoding logic into, the, into rules of law, which place themselves at the top of an abstract power hierarchy. Alternatively, if their attempts to give themselves abstract power were too obvious, People would use their reading and writing skills to place a god at the top of the abstract power hierarchy and subversively imply they were God's formally chosen representatives, implicitly giving them access to God's abstract power. There are several different ways to create and award oneself with abstract power, but the bottom line is that the people who write the stories and make the laws had a clear tendency to become the rulers. Literacy, therefore, translates directly into the ability to build empires and exploit populations through their belief systems at unprecedented scale. We have established that abstract power and abstract power hierarchies are nothing more but belief systems. They are elaborate logic constructions with high degrees of abstraction passed down over thousands of generations of storytelling. Symbols of this abstract power can be pressed into clay, written on parchment, worn as a crown, or encoded into a computer. But the abstract power they wield exists nowhere except within the minds of sapiens, the only place where it isn't both physically powerless and objectively meaningless. Because people mistakenly hypothesize abstract power as real power, people tend to forget this. 
as more people treat abstract power as a concretely real thing, they proceed to act like it is a concretely real thing. And that combined action convinces others it is, it's a concretely real thing. Eventually, everyone just starts acting like abstract power is a real thing without questioning it. Creating abstract power is therefore a fake it until you make it phenomenon. People can fake like they have real power until people start acting like they have real power and eventually project real power for them, creating a self-perpetuating cycle. This phenomenon is commonly seen today with celebrity influencers, people who are famous for being famous. Early God Kings were similar to celebrity influencers, and the written languages they used to create and expand their abstract power was a way to make their influence go viral faster. This is a very important concept to note because in the next chapter, the author will describe this is exactly what's happening following the invention of new language called of a new language called machine code and a new form of literacy that gives people control over people's computers and digital information. The bottom line up front is that software represents a new way for people to encode abstract power hierarchies, which place themselves at the top of those abstract power hierarchies. The argument will be made that computer programs give 21st century humans the ability to create and wield abstract power at unprecedented scale. But before we get there, we need to develop a thorough understanding about the abstract power hierarchies formed in previous centuries. Chapter 4.7.2 Types of Abstract Power Hierarchies Societies appeared in Mesopotamia at least as early as 6,000 years ago and evolved into the first cities and states around 5,000 years ago. With the invention of written language during the same time frame, these abstract power hierarchies were formally codified into written rule sets we now call rules of law, marking the beginning of written history. Not surprisingly, the design philosophy of these abstract power hierarchies was rooted in theology, philosophy, and ideology. They rely on having someone declare the right way to settle disputes establish control authority over property, and achieve consensus on the legitimate state of ownership and chain of custody of property. The people with the highest rank at the top of these abstract power hierarchies are ostensibly the best qualified people to know what right is. To use the terminology from the previous section, the highest ranking members of the, are the gatekeepers from whom the population seeks permission and approval. Over time, the abstract power wielded by high-ranking people within their abstract power hierarchies gets hypostasized. Their imaginary power began to look and feel physically real because everybody started thinking and acting like it was real. It still holds true today. Theological, philosophical, and ideological gatekeepers start to look powerful because our peers start thinking and acting like they're powerful. Fast forward through thousands of years of storytelling, this process has produced many different types of abstract power hierarchies involving many different types of high-ranking people who wield mass many types of abstract power. Regardless of their structure, all abstract power hierarchies effectively work the same way. The people at the bottom of the dominus hierarchy must have permission and approval from the people at the top of the dominus hierarchy. In other words, all abstract power hierarchies are trust-based, permission-based, and inegalitarian systems. The people at the top of these hierarchies are the people who, supposedly, who are supposedly the most qualified to determine what permissions and approvals the rest of the population ought to have. This means all abstract power hierarchies are simultaneously trust-based systems. The people at the bottom of the dominus hierarchy must trust that the people at the top are indeed the most qualified to determine what permissions the population ought to have. The people at the bottom of the dominus hierarchy must also trust that the people at the top won't deliberately withhold their permission and approval, nor systemically exploit the population with their special permission and approval capabilities. Therein lies the massive systemic security flaw of all abstract power hierarchies. The first, type, the first types of people 
from which populations sought permission and approval appeared to be Paleolithic shamans. These shamans were eventually replaced by Neolithic priests and god kings. By the Bronze and Iron Ages, cultural evolution and a whole lot of physical conflict changed god kings into regular kings, senators, or emperors. Today, the highest ranking positions wielding the most ab amount of abstract power are called kings, presidents, senators, and prime ministers. These high ranking positions sit within the formally encoded abstract power hierarchies described in Table 4. Table 4. Examples of modern day abstract power hierarchy designs. You have abstract power hierarchy designs, reference 102, presidential republic. Head of state is a president that serves as the head of government, exercises abstract power alongside an independent legislature. Examples are United States of America, Mexico, most countries in South America. Then we have semi-republic, semi-presidential republic. Head of state is a president who has some executive powers, exercises abstract power alongside an independent legislature. Remaining abstract power of the president is invested in a ministry that is subject to parliamentary confidence. France, Russia, Ukraine, Mongolia, South Korea. Republic with executive presidency nominated, elected by a legislature. President is both head of state and government the ministry, including the president, may or may not be subject to parliamentary confidence. South Africa, Botswana, Guyana. Parliamentary Republic, head of state is a president who is mostly or entirely ceremonial. Ministry is subject to parliamentary confidence. Germany, Italy, India. Constitutional monarchy, head of state is a monarch that is mostly or entirely ceremonial. Ministry is subject to parliamentary confidence. United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, Spain, Norway, Sweden. Semi-constitutional monarchy. Head of state is an executive monarch who personally exercises abstract power in concert with other institutions. Morocco, Jordan, Qatar, United Arab Emirates. Absolute monarchy. Head of state is executive with all authority invested in a monarch. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Oman. One party state, head of state is executive or ceremonial. Abstract powers constitutionally linked to a single political movement. China, North Korea, Vietnam. Something important to note about today's abstract power hierarchies is that they're exponentially more centralized and asymmetrically powerful now than they've ever been in the history of human civilization. The valuable resources of approximately 8 billion people are now controlled by something like 10,000 high-ranking people across the world who have the overwhelming majority of all abstract power. While highly energy efficient, this type of social system comes at the cost of creating systemic security vulnerabilities. Never in human history have so many valuable resources been more centrally controlled by such a small ruling class. It would have been mathematically impossible in the past due to population sizes, even though there were a larger number of independent city-states. People are living in an abstract belief system where the combined global resources of all sapiens are governed by only 0.0001% of its population. Chapter 4.7.3 Modeling the differences between physical power-based and abstract power-based resource control. The abstract power-based APB dominance hierarchies created by behaviorally modern sapiens can be modeled as resource control structures. APB resource control structures that sapiens use have the same function as the physical power-based PPB resource control structures of other species, species modeled in the previous chapter. This means we can compare the abstract power-based resource control system created by Neolithic sapiens to the power projection-based resource control system created by natural selection 
to gain some additional insight ab about how and why human attempts to establish their dominance hierarchy using something other than physical power can result in different complex emergent behavior. Figure 49 and figure 50 compare both resource control systems. See section 3.11 for a more thorough explanation of figure 49. Here we have figure 49, model of the resource control structure created by natural selection. This is physical power-based resource control system created by natural selection. References 88 and 89. Here we have figure 50 model of abstract power-based resource control system created by Neolithic Sapiens. And uh, basically the comparison is one uses real energy, the other one uses abstract rank. And this one is references 90 and 76. At first glance, power-based and abstract-based resource control structures look the same. The controlled process is the same, and so is the purpose of the overall control structure. To establish consensus on the state of ownership and chain of custody of resources, the controllers are also the same. Just as wild pack animals are comprised of members and physical power projectors, the post-Paleolithic society is also compromised of members and abstract power projectors. Similarly, just as physical power functions as controller with control authority over members and power projectors, so too does abstract power function as a controller and wield control authority over sapiens. Consequently, both resource control techniques have the same overall shape and structure. A clear difference between systems is the type of power used. Whereas wild animals use physical power, watts, to establish control authority over resources, post-Paleolithic sapiens attempt to use imaginary or abstract power, rank, to establish control authority over resources. Sapiens use their large neocortices to create an imaginary source of power within their collective minds called rank, and then they nominate different people to have that rank. These high-ranking abstract power projectors are formally granted control authority over society's resources via formally codified rules of law, allowing them to approve or deny people's access to society's resources, as well as change the state of ownership of those resources. For example, the state of ownership of dry land is usually controlled by government executives or ministries. Civilians, i.e. members within modern society, must request access to that land and government officials approve or deny those requests. Major differences between physical and abstract power-based resource control systems have been enumerated and highlighted in different colors. Beginning with the control actions highlighted in purple, the first four enumerated control actions worth noting for its differences is the subscribe control action executed by members and power projectors. Members and power projectors with in abstract power-based systems, subscribe to the control authority of abstract power just like they do with power projection-based systems. What makes this control action appreciably different is the fact that it's implicitly voluntary. Whereas members and power projectors of power projection-based systems do not have the ability to unsubscribe from the control authority of Watts. You are a member of this system. Members and power projectors of abstract po projection-based systems do have the ability to unsubscribe from the control authority of rank. People can simply choose to be unsympathetic to rank by ignoring it and refusing to believe in it, whereas it is physically impossible to ignore or be uninfluenced by real-world physical power. 
the second of four enumerated control actions worth noting for its systemic differences is the request in ranking control action executed by power projectors. Whereas physical power projectors receive their physical power passively via natural sortition and actively via engineering ingenuity, abstract power projectors receive their rank passively via things like rhetoric, enforcement, and rules of law. They run for election or they climb their way to up an existing hierarchy to achieve the rank they desire. People don't achieve their rank unless it's passed on to them. Hence the practice of bloodlines and inbreeding. Or randomly, unless sortition is codified into the rule of law. Romans used to do this to mitigate the threat of corrupt people abusing their rank. U.S. does this using concepts like jury duty. The third of four enumerated control actions worth noting is the in-rank control action executed by power. Instead of being physically empowered, power projectors within abstract projection-based control systems are merely in-ranked. As discussed previously, abstract power projectors don't have real, i.e. physical power. The last of four enumerated control actions worth noting is the change abstract state control action executed by abstract power projectors. Because abstract power projectors don't have physically real power, they cannot physically change the state of ownership and chain of custody of resources in a shared objective physical reality. They can only change the abstract state of ownership of resources. In other words, high-ranking people can claim that a piece of property you physically con control access to doesn't belong to you but they can't physically gain access to or physically deprive you from having, it, having access to it. Thus, the ability of abstract power projectors to change the state of ownership and chain of custody of agrarian resources is symbolic only. There are actually physically, they are actually physically powerless to do this. Another noteworthy difference between physical versus abstract power projectors is that abstract power projectors can't execute the same control actions as physical power projectors can, whereas physical power projectors can physically gain access to resources and physically defend access to resources. Abstract power projectors can do neither of these things. The same flaw of imaginary power keeps appearing in different ways. High-ranking people are physically powerless. Chapter 4.7.4 4. Physical power hierarchies are inclusive, but abstract power hierarchies aren't. The different characteristics of physical power, watts, and abstract power, rank, lead to several different complex emergent properties between PPB and APB dominance hierarchies and resource control structures. There are at least three major differences worth noting for this theory. The first of three major differences between PPB dominance hierarchies and APB dominance hierarchies is that physical power hierarchies are inclusive to everyone, whereas abstract power hierarchies aren't. Everybody has access to watts and can effectively vote with them. Everyone can swing a fist, swing a blade, pull a trigger, solve a hash function, or do a host of other things to use physical power to represent their interests. This makes physical power hierarchies highly representative of the will of the people who choose to use it. In contrast, abstract power is non-inclusive. Few people get to have rank, and not everyone gets the right to vote. Instead, only an extremely small sample of the population gets to have rank required to vote on their rules, making the system far less representative of the will of the people who choose to use rank rather than wants. In this sense, terms like representative democracy are oxymorons akin to terms like the People's Republic because a very small number of votes, 0.0001% in the case of the U.S. representative democracy, is, statistically speaking, not a highly representative sample size of the population's beliefs and interests. 
Chapter 4.7.5 Physical power hierarchies give everyone unbounded power, but abstract power hierarchies don't. A second major systemic difference between physical power, watts, and abstract power, rank hierarchies, is that watts are unbounded and non-zero sum, whereas rank is bounded and zero sum. There is no theoretical limit to the amount of physical power honest people can use to represent and secure their interests. In contrast, there is a hard, mathematical limit to how much rank people can use to represent and secure their interests. This systemic difference is especially relevant in voting systems because it makes voting systems simple to systemically exploit. For example, the resources and interests of 330 million Americans is controlled by less than 1,000 high-ranking people. This means Americans are limited to the abstract power of less than 1,000 people to represent and secure their interests. If the majority of those 1,000 high-ranking people collude at the expense of the people they ostensibly represent, then 330 million people are mathematically guaranteed not to be able to overturn their vote. They can't access more rank, and they can't outvote or overturn collusion, resulting in a state of systemic oppression which can only be solved via physical confrontation. Hence why republics and democracies descend into civil wars and revolutions. This security vulnerability occurs because all abstract power hierarchies and voting systems are trust-based and permission-based systems. People must necessarily trust that their representatives will use their rank to represent public interests rather than their own personal interests because they are physically powerless to stop them as well as mathematically incapable of countervailing a regulatory captured voting system. People must operate based on their tacit permission of a small on the tacit permission of a small number of high ranking people who control the majority vote because otherwise people are both mathematically and physically incapable of adding more votes to impeach the colluding members codified control authority if there is no way to impeach the control authority of majority or unanimous voters then it's technically a trust-based and permission system where a centralized ruling party has irrevocably has irrevocable control authority. Cicero famously called this design feature out. Great is the power, great is the authority of a Senate that is unanimous in its opinions. Chapter 4.7.6 Physical power hierarchies can't be systemically exploited, but abstract power hierarchies can a third major systemic difference between physical power, aka watts, hierarchies, and abstract power, aka rank hierarchies, is that watts are exogenous to people's belief systems and therefore invulnerable to systemic exploitation, whereas abstract power is endogenous to people's belief systems and therefore vulnerable to systemic exploitation. In other words, Rank exists internally within the system it's used. The control authority associated with rank is formally codified by rule makers, and so are the logical constraints. That means lawmakers can simply change the rules or write exploitable logic to gain, maintain, and abuse their abstract power. I am certainly a victim of that. Rule makers can meddle with the rules, bait and switch the rules, or deliberately design their logic to have exploitable properties which benefit one group of people at the expense of others. Rule makers can design the rules to award themselves with more voting power than other people, or they can make one side's rank and votes carry more mathematical weight and control authority than another side's rank and votes by simply changing the logic of the voting system. With discrete mathematical precision, rule makers can design loopholes, backdoors, trapdoors, and zero days in systems design logic, which nullify people's ability to represent and secure themselves. They can award themselves with veto power. They can exploit voting protocols via gerrymandering or counterfeiting or other common forms of fraud. There are many ways abstract power can be systemically exploited. 
and there are many ways to deliberately design rules of law so they are intentionally exploitable without detection from the public. You want to look up one such law? Failure to warn. And the laws that generic drug makers have to match the label of the name brand and are supposedly not allowed to deviate from it. Therefore, stripping them of liability from failure to warn their customers, sick people, of the dangers of their drug. That is a legit loophole in this country. One that I have fallen victim to. I'm leaving this in too. I'm not taking this one out. Physical power, on the other hand, is impossible to systemically exploit in this manner because nobody has the capacity to write any of the rules. Watts are systemically exogenous and fully independent from anybody's belief system or any rule set designed or encoded by any person for that matter. Physical power exists in an ontologically separate plane of knowledge that abstract power, then abstract power predated human-made constructs like rank and authority by at least 14 billion years. It's impossible to counterfeit watts. It's impossible to meddle with the properties of watts or bait and switch watts. It's impossible to gerrymander watts. There is no way to veto someone's watts or make one person's watts carry more weight than another person's watts. There is no way to ignore someone's watts. Nobody with any amount of rank can escape from the effects of Watts. Being unsympathetic to Watts doesn't negate the effect of Watts. There is no way to manipulate the logic of Watts to subserviously encode exploitable backdoors or trapdoors. Watts are free from the risk of meddling, interference, mismanagement, and abuse. For these and many more reasons, Watts produce a systemically secure technique for people to represent their will, resolve their disputes, and reach consensus on the legitimate state of ownership and chain of custody of their resources.